Blu-ray Collection Part 34. Hi, hi everybody, and welcome to part 34 of a look at my Blu-ray collection. Um, so these are just films, TV, music, comedy, anything could be in here, just no box sets. And by box sets, I mean box sets of multiple films or multiple series of a TV show. Okay, this is Starship Troopers 3 Marauder. I basically got this because I only just got a Blu-ray player and it was quite cheap and I love the first Starship Troopers. In fact, I think got a vague feeling that I actually thought this was the first one. I, I know I picked it up in HMV in Portsmouth. I got a feeling I grabbed it thinking it was the first Starship Troopers. Um, it's okay. It's not terrible. Nowhere near as good as, as the first. Um, but Casper Dean's back in it. Or Casper Van Dien rather. Jillian Blaylock, Blalock is in it. Amanda Donahoe. So the cast isn't too bad. It's fun. Just not as good as the first. This is the Railway Man. I don't quite remember how and why I bought this. Apart from the fact Nicole Kidman's in it and I'm a big fan of Nicole Kidman. I've got a feeling it was like a Black Friday deal or something like that on Amazon and it was like one ninety nine or something silly. So I decided to get it. Because it's not the sort of film I would normally think, oh I must buy that, even with Nicole in it. She's not an actress, so I buy everything she does, but I always enjoy what she, she's in, if that makes sense, or enjoy her performances. I own a lot of her stuff, but I'm selective about what I get. It's basically what I'm saying. Um, but this turned out to be a fantastic film. Um, so Colin Firth is an older gentleman. Um, and he's reminiscing, basically, and it's, most of it is sort of told in flashback of when he was a prisoner of war held by the Japanese during the Second World War um, and it's sort of the story of that time and he's sort of traumatised by it he comes back, he marries Nicole Kidman and he tracks down one of the Japanese interrogators I'm going to sneeze <laughs> He tracks down one of the Japanese interrogators to try and you know, get some closure, basically. But yeah, it's a really good film. This is Alice Through the Looking Glass. I loved the first the Tim Burton's Alice in Wonderland. Uh, so this is the same cast with some additions, but it's not Tim Burton is the important bit about this. It is... James... Somebody. Here we go. I've got DVD profiler up, so anything I need to look up, I can get to relatively quickly. Uh, oh, looking glass. James Bobbin, Bobin. Um, so Mia Razakowska, who I'm a huge fan of, is Alice again. And she goes back basically into she goes through the looking glass back into Wonderland and things have got even worse basically um and so she has to put things right again it's the plot of Alice through the looking glass uh Sasha Baron Cohen's very good in it he's sort of a new character but it's still enjoyable but it is nothing compared to the first one which some people don't even like the first one but personally I love it Complete change of pace. This is Countess Dracula, a Hammer Horror film, starring Ingrid Pitt. Uh, basically, it's the Countess Bathory story. Bathory? I think something like that. Um, except in this one, she's Countess Elizabeth Nadasdi. But basically, she's a she's an wi elderly widow who discovers that bathing in virgins... Is it virgins? Yeah, virgins blood makes her young again. And it's that story, basically. Um, it's typical Hammer Horror, 70s. Lots of boobs, lots of blood. Lots of fun. Uh, Hand of the Baskervilles. I think this is four consecutive parts where there's been something Sherlock Holmes related. 
Uh, so this is an arrow release of the Peter Cushing Hand of the Baskervilles with Christopher Lee as Sir Henry Baskerville, uh, Andre Morel as Watson. I think it's it. Yeah. It is the Hand of the Baskerville story. It is, it is one that this is probably like this 748 version of the Hand of the Baskervilles I own. It's a very good one. Possibly. Possibly the best Sherlock Holmes movie. Certainly of the ones that are faithful to um, Conan Doyle. So I'll discount the Danny Jr. ones from that. But probably, yeah, the best. Certainly the best I've seen. I like all of them, but probably the best. Great performances all around. Very atmospheric, very well directed. Great film. Speaking of great films, this is what we do in the shadows. So this is the film. It is now a successful TV series, which is excellent as well. But this is the original film by uh, a bloke whose name I can never see, Takawatiti and Jermaine Clement from Flight of the Concords. So it's, a, it's done documentary style about this group of vampires living in a house in New Zealand and their human familiar and it's you know basically just their story if you like you know it is a documentary about them but it is very 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 funny highly recommend okay this although it is technically a box set it's in a normal amore so for the time being it can live with these until i'm desperate for space but this is the mummy trilogy so this is the mummy the mummy returns and tomb of the dragon emperor I love the first film. The other two are, are good, very enjoyable, but not as good as the first. But a lot of fun. The third one suffers not from ha from having from not having Rachel Weisz in it. Uh, this is Force Awakens. This is the first of the new trilogy of Star Wars films. Um, little smirk there because if you saw part thirty-one, I think it was. I mistakenly said the Last Jedi was, and then realised my mistake. Uh, yeah, I very much enjoy all three of these. This is the dark side cover. Basically, all of the, I think, all of the new trilogy have been released with alternative light and dark side covers, or First Order and um, Rebellion, whatever it's called nowadays. Um, Yeah, it's just really enjoyed all three of them. It's possibly the best of the three, but yeah, really good. Those are good extras as well on this. Oh, that's what the actual cover looks like, that brilliant poster. I don't need to say too much about him, you're all familiar with it. Uh, it's Terminator Salvation, so this was the fourth Terminator film. Uh, so Christian Bale plays John Connor. And he's sort of... He's, this is sort of set after Judgment Day when things are starting to really kick off. Um, Anton Yelchin plays Carl Reese. Uh, Sam Worthington is in it as well. Moon Blood, good. Probably my least favourite. Not having seen Dark Fate, is it the last one? But of the, of the rest of them, probably my least favourite Terminator film. Doesn't really feel like a Terminator film. This was very good. Spielberg's The Adventures of Tintin. Or Spielberg and Peter Jackson, isn't it? Combined. Uh, directed by Steven Spielberg. Written by Stephen Moffat, Edgar Wright and Joe Cornish. So it's all done mocap. Um, Peter Jackson produced it. But it's, it's a Tintin story, but it's really well done. Very good, very funny as well, as you would expect from those writers. Very much enjoyed. We have a couple of Tim Minchin Blu-rays. Uh, so we have, I think this is the right way around. Uh, this is ready for this. Tim Minchin is one of my favourite comedians, probably in my top three at least. Um, 
when I first saw him, he was a guest on Nevermind the Buzzcocks, and they showed a little clip of him, and I thought, well, he's just ripping off Bill Bailey, but he's really not. Apart from the fact that he does songs, he's a very different style from Bill Bailey for a start. Um, I love both of them, basically. But I sort of fell in love with him, for want of a better phrase. He did one of the Secret Policeman's Balls at the Albert Hall, and he did a couple of songs, and they were just so uh, great songs, but they're also really funny as well. And that is the joy of him. He does, he's got some fairly serious songs as well, but by and large, they're just A, very funny, and B, work as just really good songs in their own right. And then his stand up, in, sort of in between songs, is A, very funny, and B, very clever as well. I just really love him. Saw him live. In fact, I just realised I saw him live last year on his comeback tour. He was excellent. Um, so this is ready for this, which was a normal show, if you like, uh, recorded at Hammersmith Apollo or whatever it was called at the time. Yeah, it was Hammersmith Apollo. Um, this is basically one of his stand-up shows, although he does very little standing up. Most of it is sat at the piano. Um, but some great stuff on there and then this is him with the Heritage Orchestra live at Royal Albert Hall so he bended a big uh, arena tour and also Albert Hall with a full orchestra oh, it's just magnificent uh, let's call it a day here so that is part 34 done past parts are available on the playlist keep an eye on the playlist for future parts thank you for watching like comment and subscribe and I'll see you in another video thanks Bye.